Hello everyone, this is the GSOC Jenkins Docker-based Quick Start weekly meeting. Uh, sorry for missing last week meeting. <laughs> I think I clicked on the wrong link. My bad. Uh, anyhow, um, Jean-Marc and Ashutosh were there in the meeting, which got posted on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jean-Marc won't be able to join us today, so that's just the three of us. Um, last week, I gave quite a lot of work <laughs> to Ashutosh, and there was one big part, which was about um, trying to get the first step for the CI test, you know, um, we chose to start with uh, GitHub Actions and we see it was not as simple and easy as I had imagined. Anyhow, uh, we had a few action items uh, still to do. We had something to add about the Maven tutorial um because uh, there was a part missing in the documentation explaining what is happening behind the scenes for the second persona we had uh, envisioned but that's not urgent at all so that he, that has been um, moved to a distant milestone so we're already on um week 29 so we'll try to focus on milestone week 29 this week and first thing I'd like to be solved is the reverse proxy issue. Um, because it's not good looking, you know, when you are starting the tutorial, you see there is a reverse proxy issue. Uh, you're not really confident with the rest of the project. Uh, I know the project works pretty well, but, you know, getting the reverse proxy issue is not cool to see. Uh, we also have uh, something to do about the Python example uh, this week. I hope it's not too complicated. And we have the big part about the GitHub Actions and Experiment. Now, I um, gave a quite a lot of work, I already said that, uh, to Ashdosh last week, and he was not able to uh, go to the end of the tasks, and that's perfectly normal. I was <laughs> maybe too um, ambitious uh, about that. You know, I thought it would be kind of easy, but it was not. And what worked for me did not work for Ashtosh. You know, I provided an example PR, which kind of worked, but I had a very simplified setup and not the four examples, the four. Uh, quick start examples. So I didn't think of that. And of course, it didn't work as expected. But Ashutosh will let us know more about that later on. So I took all the milestone we had, all the issues today, and moved them, translated them to next week's milestone. And, the, you know, each milestone in now another week. Ashutosh, I can't remember when you're supposed to uh, get done with um, the GSOC project. I think it's between the middle middle of August and the end of August. Okay, I don't uh, remember either. Yeah, no, okay, that's okay. I should. Uh, you know, I'm the mentor. I'm supposed to know about that. But that's not a problem. We'll do what we can. Uh, until you're not available anymore and we'll see uh, later on what's left to do but anyhow we'll have some parts that do work uh, even if we haven't uh, solved all the issues or work items um i was in vacation uh, last week paid time off so i was not able to work for this project or attend meetings uh were you able to go to um Doc's office hours previous week or the week before the previous week? Yes, I did attend the uh, uh, previous week, uh, before previous week. This week uh, it was not held because Mark was on holiday. Yeah, okay, cool. So I did attend it and we, uh, okay, I don't, we talked, I don't remember exactly what I talk, we talked about because it was two weeks ago. Uh, yep. No, that's okay. Thanks for going to this meeting. Um, I know, um, I think that after the meeting, I saw a few comments, uh, of Mark in your repo, uh, especially for the plugin updates, which we are not focusing on this week. 
So I think you may have talked about uh, the plugins. I'm not. Yes, Anyhow. yes, yes. <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Okay, now for the repo. Uh, a few weeks ago, Jean-Marc uh, wanted us to have some kind of Kanban. Um, because for the time being, we only have milestones, which proved quite handy, but you can't reorganize, um, you know, the issues or work items. They appear the way they appear, and some of them may be more uh, prioritized than others, but we can see them in the, in the milestones view. So that's not perfect, but as we already are somehow late, um, I don't think we should focus on creating a Kanban, but whenever you feel like doing so, you could create a project on GitHub and create a Kanban. But frankly, uh, that's not mandatory. We could do without until the end of the project. Just do that if you want to experiment with that, but frankly, no pressure to have a Kanban or something looking like that, okay? Thank you. Um, now, for the Maven tutorial that you uh, showed uh, during the demo, um, we still had a question which was, uh, should we get the user to fork and clone all by himself or let the scripts do it? I think even if it hasn't been written yet, written down yet, I think we agreed that we should have a script that does that kind of thing but that we shouldn't uh, run this script by default. You know, uh, people are expected to know how to fork, how to clone, how to use their local IDE. So the script could be helpful maybe later on in the process when we will use um, CI on CI Jenkins IO. So there could be some kind of automation in order to get uh, the repos forked and cloned locally and so on. But for the time being, we should not have it um, called directly within the Jenkins init.sh. And I think that's the case, Ashutosh. It's not being called by default anymore, is it? Yes. No, yeah, it's not. That's cool. Okay. Now, for the pull request, I just saw one just before the meeting started. Okay. Well done. <laughs> so, this one is about GitHub Actions. And uh, frankly, last week, I wouldn't have been able to review it had you done a draft pull request, so that's not a problem. But as I'm back on track, hopefully, uh, don't hesitate to make all the draft pull requests, uh, even if that's early, even if that does not work. So if ever I could spot, or Beviento or Jean-Marc, something that does not work for us, uh, we could let you know. Not saying that you're doing some things that don't work, but you know we are just a little bit more experienced with Docker yes, and so yes. on. So maybe you could spot something early on, so that you don't go into a dead end. Um, yes. Whatever. So please, yes. yes, commit and push regularly. Create new branches. Let us know. Create draft pull requests, even if you don't ping us because you think it's not um, ready to review. Uh, and you don't want to uh, us to spend some time on something that is unfinished, but that's just so that we can spot if ever there is something we could help with. Okay, so of course I haven't been able to review your uh, pull request, but we'll do so later on. I think you still uh, experience some issues with um, the whole process; it doesn't work as expected yet. Am I right? Yes, I uh, right now it's working fine, but I have a doubt in the uh, running a building a job from the uh, part on the with oh. the curl command. I don't understand that part completely from your PR. Others, uh, I have uh, uh, right now the GitHub action works for uh, whenever uh, the changes have been made to the particular directory. For example, if it's uh, Changes are made to the second example, it will only run the second examples uh, in the GitHub Actions and not others. But the default one will always run the example on the root directory that will run regardless of whatever is changed. Okay, uh, so I will have a look at that. Uh, frankly, to get it working on my draft PR, I spent quite a lot of time 
because I had trouble um, parsing, you know, the um, JSON result, uh, for example, with JQ. You know, sometimes I had some trouble with a job that had never run. I also had null, as I think you had. Um, no, it's not that easy. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not easy, definitely. So there are maybe some things to tweak to get it running in each and every case. I have a look at that and let you know on the on the review. Uh, if ever you need to do some pair programming this week, uh, don't hesitate to ask for half an hour or an hour. Um, we could progress together um, just in case uh, so that you don't get stuck. Yes. Cool. Uh, there were other pull requests, but uh, there were just uh, proof of concepts for next milestones uh, or even for this one. So you already had spotted the adding GitHub action for Jenkins validation. Uh, for next milestone, there is also the push the images to Docker Hub because uh, Damien Duportal and Mark Waite uh, told us it's nice to build on the spot um it could be helpful for the ci once more once we migrate to ci jenkins io but for the end user i think i i put a lot of details in this uh, pr yeah. but for most of the users uh we could face some issues for example they could try to build that on a platform we haven't tested and that does not work which is not cool uh, to discover when it's already too late because Imagine it's not a powerful machine. It takes half an hour to build. And in the end, yes. boom, it does not start. Ah. So yeah, we'd like to avoid that. And I tried to build on lots of different architectures in this PR. I tried on S390X. I highly doubt any uh, first time Jenkins user is using such a platform. But anyhow, I think it was working. Uh, PPC 64 LE, I got some trouble when building. And I think I also had some problem with ARM v7. So anyhow, I just chose to add ARM 64 and AMD 64, which means any PC, uh, I guess, <laughs> any recent PC. So we'll just uh, focus on these ones, but it's for our next milestone. Then we also have the get rid of the mandatory bash file because for all the time being we have the Jenkins in it and the Jenkins teardown bash files which work very well but don't work uh, for some people using Windows. Windows without WSL. Yes. So this it's a draft PR that works for me. Uh, it may not work for you. I think there is a lot of work ahead. But yes, that's just a proof of concept. Uh, so we get rid of the bash files so that everyone can get it to work, whatever the platform may be, as long as they have Docker desktop or Docker command line, Docker client and Docker server available for that platform. Uh, then we have the Node tutorial, which is pretty straightforward. And we have the Python tutorial, which is for this milestone this week, hopefully. Yes. Then, uh, yes, go ahead, Ashutosh. No, I... Uh... And I didn't want to say anything particular. I was just agreeing. Cool, thank you. Because I know I talk way too much. <laughs> As for the work items, we still have 17 to this day. And I think I will find some other ones <laughs> this week. Um, but for this milestone, so this week, I like that we focus on the Gitpod Weaver's proxy setup is broken. And it's not only Gitpod. I saw a comment from Mark or yes. John Mark. Yeah, which who was saying that yeah. it's not working with the during, during the previous and uh, of Docs Office hours in Mark setup, it was not. It was also showing this same error. There was proxies broken. So um, please, while we review your uh, PR from today, uh, have a look at that if you can and try to find why it's not working anymore. I think it has worked in the past, right? It used to work. No, or did whenever, I daydream? Whenever local uh, local host uh, has not used, it doesn't work. So it only works when local host it is used, and Mark was not using that. Uh huh. That's okay. why the, the Git pod also shows the same error. Got it. 
uh, hopefully you sort it out uh, pretty easily we'll see then we have build a python app with spy installer um uh, we'll see but i think this one is you could do it by the end of the week uh except if there are some things i haven't spotted yet but i think it should work uh, pretty easily okay and the next one is about the ssh key generation but i don't remember uh, were you able to reproduce uh, the issue or not this one is solved uh, i did uh, post the message to john mark but i th think he didn't solve it but this this one is solved this is not happening anymore that's cool <laughs> cool nice. um Good news. Um, and then about the plugins, I think we had the discussion uh, through one uh, GitHub issue uh, about that, and we agreed uh, that we should keep the plugin updated thanks to a script. Uh, which would give the whole list of the plugins, not only the one we need, but the one which are installed by default when you are creating a new Jenkins instance. It could be kind of overwhelming for end users to see this big list of plugins, but that is the best way to have a um, definite list of plugins that work all together, you know, not just a subset that you know work together, but you don't know about the other ones. And whenever you start or you restart a Jenkins and instance and you didn't take care of the embedded plugins, then there is some um, information you don't want the end user to see. You know, he starts his Jenkins instance and uh, the UI is already complaining about plugins being outdated. It's kind of disturbing for the end user. So that's why we showed this solution. But once more, it's not something we'll address uh, during this milestone. It will be for uh, the next uh, next one, or maybe the, the, the a few weeks from now. Whatever. Oh, 31, so two weeks from now. Whew. Uh, we covered everything I had in mind, but please uh, let us know, Beviento or Ashutosh, uh, what you were thinking about. Is, it, is there anything you would like to talk about? Are you struggling with something we should know? off uh, in the uh, github action file i do want to see about, uh, in the build uh, building the job section i don't understand that part from your pr complete okay uh come on um okay uh sorry i don't master uh, google docs uh <laughs> so Ouch. So with the job creation, is that right? Yes. Yeah. With the job creation in the GitHub action. Okay. Um, you don't understand the workflow, the way it works, or you don't understand why it doesn't work. Uh, I don't understand the workflow right now. Okay. Uh, is there uh, anything you, we could? Yeah, go ahead. If you uh, uh, have any documentation where I can find uh, how this works, that would be helpful. So how the job creation works uh, when using the REST API? Yes. I, I didn't search it myself because I just I was in just find that so it's easy to find. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, of course, I had found a few pointers here and there about job creation with uh, Jenkins REST API. So I'll try to give you the links. But frankly, uh, the documentation 
is not really complete and uh, you know it's not state of the art documentation i think i found um a few hints here and a little bit of documentation there and i had to connect the dots uh by myself and i even think that uh some of the commands i used were by experimenting uh failing and trying something else so some things are not part of the documentation i found they may exist somewhere but <laughs> i don't know where so yeah i totally get it that you don't really understand how it's working um if i remember what i remember is that you have to authenticate uh, to begin with <clears throat> sorry so as we have only one user for Zambi, which happens to be admin with a very weak password um i first kind of log in you know with just a uh, user password in the url then it gives me <clears throat> i think a crumb you know uh, it's to protect trsf then i get with this crumb a uh, cookie file so I've got uh, user password, crumb, cookie file. And then with that, I managed to get uh, an authentication token. So all the first steps are just to create an authentication token. And once I have this authentication token, I have to uh, make a post, a HTTP post request to start a job. Uh, that's what I think I remember. And the problem is um, your your jobs, which could have been mine, uh, use some spaces in the name. Yes, you know. it complicates so the we have to writing. double escape them uh, yeah. in order to get them started. I, I, I spent quite some time before understanding that because the jobs could not be found. I was wondering why. Anyhow. So once you start that, uh, it then gives you, uh, I think it's a JSON answer. But the very first time, as we have never ever started uh, a job, there is lots of values which are null or empty. Yeah. So we have to make a loop and wait until we get something that we can use. And then GQ, uh, JQ, sorry, uh, tries to grab the number of the build and if it's something it can understand then we say that the job is doing well and then in the end um, we are waiting until the job is marked as completed and successful but it just out of the top of my mind uh, I could have said uh, bullshit uh, I don't know uh, I'll try to find the documentation and give you the links <laughs> that should be explained way better than what i just did the uh, the point i don't understand is uh, the com i don't understand which command is uh, clicking the build now button in the process oh would you like to share your screen and show us your code or yeah yes Wait a second. cool thank you Berviento, if you know about that please <laughs> help us <laughs> Okay. Can you can you see? I can see your screen. Yeah. You can see VS Code or the browser. A uh, code, code. Okay. So. Okay. This I don't understand. Uh, where is it launching the job part this part okay uh it's doing nothing because <laughs> just echo commands oh uh yes uh the job naming Cody that's what I told you it's double html escaped um so I don't understand which command is uh, building the job yeah it's not these ones <laughs> for the timing it's later on 
Uh, where is the call command? It's missing a call. Oh, no, it's there. Okay. It's the call minus S minus K admin token. This one? Yeah. Okay. I didn't okay. I'll look into it in the documentation and try to understand it. I was not getting which where from the build is taking place. That's why I was getting confused. Okay, I'll, 92. Okay, I'll remember it. Good luck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. You're welcome. Um anything else you'd like? to talk about before we wrap it up no the i just want to apologize for slow progress and that i'll work extra hard this week to cover up everything no that's okay uh, we knew that you had to travel back to school and that you had to settle something i guess you're in a dorm or something you have your room and have you already started your uh, first um have it to help me uh you know you're um sitting and listening to the um, teacher so your first oh, classes oh yes, classes yes, courses whatever i'm sorry <laughs> yes yeah I okay so have you already have today okay you already had told us uh that we should not expect uh, as much work from you uh, as the previous weeks because you are back to school so that's okay and for last week frankly i should only have given you small items uh, and not something as big as github actions i thought it was easy i was wrong so that's my fault so you don't have to apologize for that i was it was way too ambitious and you know, in the previous week, we had lots of back and forth. We were exchanging on uh, the um, Google Docs or Element Matrix, whatever. And last week, I wasn't there to help. Um, so that explains also why you were late. Uh, that's okay. Uh, it was expected. And all is fine. I told you in the beginning of the meeting that we shifted everything one week. That's fine. Um, so please. For this week, uh, focus on small items while Bervian to I and maybe John Mark review your uh, GitHub Actions uh, PR. So Python and yeah, a bug. Reverse proxy. Yeah, reverse proxy. And if we finish that by the end of the week, I'll be happy. And maybe we even we will even be able to merge your pull request about GitHub Actions. You never know. Uh, <laughs> that could happen. That would be cool. Yes. Bevanto, anything to add? No, all good. Cool. Um, as I said before, Ashtash, if ever you want to do some pair programming uh, to have another pair of eyes, even if they are old and tired, uh, don't hesitate. We'll see if we can find a time slot together. And yes, please commit regularly, push regularly, and ping us when you think it's almost ready or if you are uh, stuck. You never know, we could maybe help. Okay? Cool. Uh, best of luck for your new year at school. And Thank you. see you later on this week. Yes. Thanks a lot for your work. Thank you. Guys. Bye, folks. Bye. Thank you.